Hello world and welcome to another episode of FUBA. In today's episode we are going to learn about usage plans and API keys with Sam. If you want to watch more content about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started! <laughs> So this is another video in the series of API Gateway Security Mechanisms. We already have covered the authorizers in previous episodes and now it's time to cover the API Gateway Usage Plans and API Keys. So I will make an example using this and uh, with some we'll do it in the back end, it will be a sum and we will provide some different uh, usage plans and API Keys to an API Gateway and see how it works. So let's get to it. In many cases, developers want to create an ecosystem of partner developers building applications on top of their APIs. API Gateway allows developers to create API keys for each of their customers using their APIs. These keys identify each user of the API and allows the API developer to control the set of services and services stages like test, production, beta, that the key holder can access. Because the API often provides substantial business value, the API creators want to regulate the access to them and monetize them by charge based on usage. In order to support this use case, API Gateway has user plans. These features allow developers to build and monetize APIs and create ecosystems around them. You can create usage plans for different levels, for example, bronze, silver, gold, different categories of users, students, individual, professionals, enterprise, and so forth. I'm pretty sure you have seen uh, different APIs that provide different levels of access in, in the internet. So this is something that you can build as well using user plans. Uh, user plans are named and you can control the following aspects of the access to an API. You can define the throttling, that is the amount of request rates, the average request per second, and the burst capacity. You can also define the quota, that is the numbers of requests that can be made per day, per week, or per month, and the different API and stages that can be accessed with this user plan. Let's look at how we can get down this with infrastructure as code using SAM and CloudFormation. You can also do this from the console in the API Gateway console page. You can go and do exactly the same, but I like to do this as infrastructure as code. So to get started, we will clone an application that we have been using for some of our examples called SAM Simplest App. You will find the link to this application in the description of the video. We just clone it. It's a very simple app with uh, one function and a little bit of code. And we clone it in our computer with a different name and then we can get started. I will open this project in Visual Studio Code, so then we can do some changes in the application and add the user plans. So the first thing we want to do is go to our package JSON and change the name of our project. I like to name my package the same name as, as the directory, so it's easy to find. And then I want to change the stack name. I usually use the same. If you're cloning this application from the GitHub repo, remember to change the bucket name to a bucket name where you can deploy because that's my bucket name and you might not have access to deploy there. After that, then we can install this application, npm install, and then inside the hello, we can install as well the function. And now we are ready to deploy. It's important to deploy this before adding the API keys. If not, the deployment will fail, telling you that the API is missing. So it's important to deploy the, this uh, simple API application that has one function and an API gateway. And then we will add the API key and the usage plan and everything will work. If you don't deploy now and you add the API key and the usage plan, you will get an error that something is missing when you try to deploy. So I will speed this deployment after uh, it's finished so we can see what happens. So now the deployment is finished and we want to go and modify our template YAML to get started working in adding the API key 
and the user plan. So let's open the template YAML and we are going to modify in my API, in the definition of the API gateway, an auth. And we will say that API key is required. Then we need to add the API key. So if we go under the function, you will add API key and then the type API key. Uh, you can add some description and you can say that it's enabled and then you can define in which um, stage this API key is used. You need to find the REST API ID. In this case, it's my API, the one from the API gateway and the stage name, this dev, is the same that we have been using. If you have multiple stages, you need to find them as well. So now we can deploy. And if we deploy now, then we will have an API key that is securing our API gateway, but we will not have a user plan. So let's move a little bit forward and create a usage plan. And for that, it's as simple as saying that you want a usage plan and you need to put some properties. First is to what API gateway it will be affecting. In this case, it's my API. And the stage, you need to say that it will be affecting, in this case, dev. Then we can add a description to uh, put some information about that. And then we will define the quota and the throttling. The quota will be 5,000 requests per month. So when the uh, customer that has this uh, API key exceeds the 5,000, then it will get um, not more access to the API. And then throttle, it will be 200 requests in a burst and a rate limit of 100 requests per second. And then we need a name for this user plan, and that's it. Then the last thing we need to do is to associate the API key that we created with the usage plan. And for that, we need to add this uh, resource called usage plan key that will associate these two. So you can have multiple uh, API keys attached to one plan, in this case, for all your customers, for example. So here you can say which key and which plan, and then that's it. Now we have everything that we need, so we can basically deploy this project, and we just run npm run deploy, because that's our script that we have defined in the package JSON. So this is deploying, and I will speed this up until we finish. So now we will finish, we will open the AWS console, go to API Gateway, and go to the API that we just created. There we can see if we go to the API that the API key is required and we can go to the usage plans and we can see that there is test user plan one created that is attached to this API and the stage dev and we can see that there is one API there. So if we click there we can see that is attached to this user plan and API. And we can see the API key that we need to give to our uh, customers that are using this. So now we can go to Postman and try this out. We will get the URL from the stages dev. And then I will put a slash hello because that's our uh, endpoint. And we can see that we get a forbidden bug. So now we need to add the API key in a header X API key. We look for the API key that we just created in um, API Gateway. We paste it in the header and then we see that when we send the request, we get something back. And that's it for using API keys and usage plans in API Gateway. It's very simple. And remember, all the code is available in GitHub. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And I think this is the last episode for the season, so you can go and check the whole playlist in the description box of this video to watch other episodes that you have not watched. And if you have any other content you would like to see in the future, let me know. And I always try to make content that you want to watch. Around here, there are other videos from my channel that you might be interested in. And if not, then I see you next week with another episode of Ciao, ciao!